Hello and welcome to the Big IP version 12.0 training for GTM and DNS enhancements. In this module we're going to look at the support for additional record types that has been added to GTM in version 12.0. This is the executive summary for that module. In version 12.0, GTM adds wide IP support for additional record types. Um, currently, or in, in previous versions, wide IPs could answer A, quad A, or C name requests. C name requests were were somewhat limited in what they could answer with, but those were the types of queries that wide IPs could support. In version 12.0, that support is being expanded to include MX records, SRV records, NAPTA records, and CNAME records will, have the, will be also a valid wide IP type that you can use rather than being attached to the pool itself. So in this new version, wide IPs and pool GTM objects are typed um, based on what queries they are going to respond to. Some I rules, since we've added a query type, um, I rules need to know what um, particular type of object you're talking about because some objects may have the same name and be different types. So I rules will now have a query parameter. If that query parameter is not included in the call to that particular iRule function, it's going to implicitly assume that it's a query type of the calling wide IP. So whatever type query type is associated with the wide IP, the iRule is going to use is going to assume that's what it is. You can still also explicitly set the query type. You'll see here that I'm using the active in the middle of the page. I'm using the active members. Um, method or iRule command and I'm explicitly telling it that it's a quad A query type. So I may be coming in on a wide IP that's an A type but I can actually use this active members to see what the quad A um, pool members active members are. Another interesting thing to note is that the new types of wide IPs can return names to as a response to the query not IP addresses. When you query a, 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 for MX records you actually receive the names back of the mail servers, um, not necessarily the IP address. They may be included in the additional inf information section, but the default is to respond back with the names. That means that pool members for a particular wide IP can now contain wide IP names of other wide IPs on the big IP. So in, in the example I have here, we have a, a wide IP that's an MX record type called mail.example.com. And within its pool, its pool is also typed as an MX type. And its pool is mail.west.example.com. And within that pool, the members of the pool are actually the wide IPs mail01 and mail02 for west.example.com. So you can see here that you can have multiple resolutions happen um, within one um, query to a wide IP because a wide IPs can actually be members of pools. So in previous versions of GTM, um, GTM always gave back sparse responses, meaning that it did not try to populate any of the additional informa info information fields or anything like that. And we're going to keep that as the default response for GTM. But there is an option now that you can specify on the wide IP itself to say that you want to have additional data returned. That field is called minimal response. If you want a full listing, you need to disable minimal response. So it's enabled by default. So by default, you're going to get minimal responses. You need to disable it to allow GTM to populate fully full responses and provide that additional data. Now you need to note that this can affect persistence because if you're responding with multiple records to a request, how does GTM know which one the client actually used to persist them to that? So that does affect persistence and you need to be aware of that. Um, the other thing that you need to be aware of is that MX and SRV and NAPTA records, those within the records themselves have a priority that is meaningful to devices that are doing those lookups, but GTM itself doesn't have any knowledge about that protocol's priority 
um, ordering rules or anything like that. So with those, if you want them to come back in a particular order all the time, you're probably going to want to do some kind of global availability load pool load balancing so that if you want priority 10 to always be the first record return, you can, um, you can use global availability to set that. The other thing is that limiting pool responses, you can say how many responses you want the pool to respond with and if you those limits, once again, it doesn't take into account what the priorities are at the protocol level, um, meaning the record level. The MX record, for example, has its own priority. It's not going to take that into account. It's going to just do um, its own load balancing unless you've done something like set the, the actual weight of it for one of the, the load balancing methods. So that's just a caveat that you need to, to keep in mind when you're configuring these. So the other thing is persistence will not work um, for wide IP types that return names. So we, we can't persist to a name per se. When So for example, if you look something up, an MX record and multiple MX records are returned, we're not going to be able to, to use those in persistence, which is another reason why you want to probably have um, that global availability or maybe even some topology um, to pin things so that they come, come at the same spot every time. The SRV records, the convention for SRV records is to use underscores in the names. Um, by default that's not enabled on the, the GTM. So you're going to need to modify the global settings to of the domain for the domain check um, setting and you're going to want to say allow underscores if you have a customer or you're trying to set something up um, that uses underscores which is kind of, which is an SRV convention you're going to need to do that, otherwise you're going to get an error. So upgrades. To get to version 12.0 um, and have your GTM configuration migrate, you need to upgrade from an 11.x version. So this may, means that you may customers may require an intermediate upgrade to get to version 12.0. If they're on a 10.x version right now, they're going to need to go to 11.x um, and and then from 11.x they're going to need to upgrade to 12.0. Um, you can't go straight from 10.x to 12.x. The other thing is that um, when you perform an upgrade, the existing wide IPs and pools will be broken apart into typed pools and wide IPs. Currently you can have pools, a wide IP that has a pool that has both A and quad A records in it and it will respond appropriately depending on on what is asked. What's going to happen is that is now going to be split out into two wide IPs, an A and a quad A wide IP, and then the pools members themselves are going to be split out into an A and a quad A pool, and each of those pools are going to be associated um, with the correct wide IP. If there was an I rule on that wide IP, it will actually be um, applied to both of those those new wide IPs. Another thing to note is that Link Controller um, relies on the, a, bunch, a lot of the GTM um, infrastructure or code base, so changes are being made, but Link Controller will only support the A and Quad A types, and you're going to see the same conversion of wide IPs and pools during the upgrade. And once again, you have to go through version 11, um, a version of 11.x, before you upgrade to 12.0. Additionally, since we have these new types, um, eye control has been changed. There are two new um, interfaces that have been introduced into eye control for the um, support of the new types within the pools and the wide IPs. Um, if you upgrade, and what, if customers upgrade, what they have will still work because they're still only using A and Quad A, and the um, old eye rule interfaces will handle that. As soon as they start adding any MX records or SRV, they're going to have to switch over to these new eye control interfaces that support the new type definitions in them.